So um, I haven't posted a YouTube video in like two weeks, but I figure if I wait until the timing is optimal and I have my ring light and I have a great camera and I have everything set up, by that time I won't post it all. So I figure it's better to just get content out and have it may not be the best, you know, video quality, but at least get the content out there for those of you who follow me and who um, really have a passion for learning about skincare and dermatology and aesthetics and staying on top of the technology and the research. So, um, what I, 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 you guys have so many insightful questions that I know I'm going to do a video on Accutane. I'm going to do another video on layering of products um, because people have a lot of questions about that. You know what active ingredients, what products are useful for morning and night skincare regimens, but the order um, usually trips people up a little bit. So I wanted to do a video on that. Um, you guys had great questions on why well, I'm not a big fan of microneedling, um, which I, I can go into. Um, somebody asked me, um, which I love this question and I would love to talk about it, but I want to do it with like a, maybe a dry erase board and explain um, how lasers affect skin on a cellular level. So that video is going to be coming down soon too. If I um, get a chance, maybe tomorrow or the next day, I can just film a couple of these videos and then just upload, a, you know, maybe one a week um, for my YouTube channel um, for those of you who follow me. But um, in short, you know, the way lasers change the skin. So when you do lasers or when you use great skincare products or when you do procedures on your skin, it basically allows the skin cells to act and behave younger. Um, younger skin isn't sand damaged, doesn't have mutated DNA, doesn't have dispigmentation from melanocytes, it doesn't have degraded collagen fibers, it doesn't have um, degraded elastin fibers, it's, it's healthy skin that functions optimally, all the cells are very organized, they haven't had hits from UV light and environmental pollutants and toxins to make them disrupted in their behavior and their activity, which down the line leads to aging, wrinkles, skin cancers, precancers, atypical nevi, things like that. So the goal is to not look younger, but to have healthy skin. Healthy skin looks younger because younger people, kids, haven't had an accumulation of lifetime insult to their skin. They've just had these healthy, beautiful skin cells under the microscope. When you look at a child's skin or adolescent skin under the microscope, they don't have this dysregulation of skin cells with degraded uh, proteins like collagen and elastin, which when they're, you know, you know, when they're damaged, can cause skin laxity and wrinkles and dilated pores and you know um, a lot of different things. So lasers histologically, when I say histologically, that just means cellularly, when you're looking under the microscope, change the skin. It makes the skin cells optimally function, communicate with intracellular communications better. Um, it makes the fibroblasts produce more collagen in a very healthy manner. It allows the immune system to come in and clean up all the degraded sun damaged cells and proteins and it stimulates your body to replace that with newer, fresher, healthy proteins and cells. So that's why lasers work. And the reason why I know this is because, you know, I, I went to a lot of school in my, in my training and after medical school, after dermatology, I mean, after internal medicine internship, after dermatology residency, I did a combined procedural Mohs and aesthetic fellowship. So I was a Mohs surgeon and Mohs, for those of you who don't know, is skin cancer surgery where the surgeon basically excises the skin cancer, looks under the microscope until it's clear. You keep taking layers or stages until it's clear and then you do the reconstruction flaps and grafts and all the fun stuff surgically to sew the patient up. I also did an aesthetic fellowship where I did lasers and Botox and fillers, injectables, non-surgical aesthetic procedures. And I went to UCLA, which was, you know, in the middle of West LA, we were doing aesthetics and cosmetic dermatology day one, probably more so than any other program that I know of because, you know, you know, say a, a dermatology program in the Midwest wouldn't have as much, you know, of a, of a patient population need for aesthetics and cosmetics. So I got a huge dose of that training in my um, residency, but where I'm going with this is um, I looked at the skin under the microscope when I was doing skin cancer surgery. And what caught my eyes, I did this for like 10 years, I would look at patients under the, under the microscope and I would get to know their skin, what their cells look like, and I could tell a patient's age by what their skin cells look like under the microscope. And even on dermatology boards, sometimes they show us like a histology derm path slide and they'll say, what's the age of the patient? Or where was this taken from, the face? the back, the extremity, and you can tell because skin's different under the microscope from different areas of the face and different decades in life because different changes happen. Different skin structures are present in different areas in the face. A skin biopsy from the face is gonna have a lot of sebaceous glands. It's going to have um, a, 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 you know, a thinner dermis than you know, skin taken off of the back, which will have a thinner epidermis and a thicker dermis. 
less sebaceous glands. Um, you know, skin biopsies from the palms of the hands have a stratum lucidum, a different, um, an additional skin cell layer. Um, they also have eccrine glands, which are more sweat glands, so a different nerve um, density. So uh, skin under the microscope is very different. It's very interesting. It was very interesting to me. And I remember looking to clear cancer, you know, I would make sure that the, the patient was um, skin cancer free, whether I was excising or doing bows on a squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, and all the um, histological variants. But I would say like, why does this 60 year old skin look better than this 40 year old skin? What is she doing? What is she using? And I would look up the products they were using. I would see just out of curiosity, like, why is her collagen so thick and healthy? Why does this patient have such great, you know, um, elastin fibers when she's, you know, 60 years old and lived on the beach? And so what would happen is I would look under the microscope and correlate these patients and the health of their skin on a cellular level to what products they were using and have they had lasers? Did they have, you know, did they have erbium? Did they have resurfacing? Did they have CO2? Did they have halo? Did they have fraxel? And then I kind of had a, a correlation. I would look at the patient and I would clear their skin cancers and we would finish the Mohs and then I would see them and follow up for cosmetic procedures. And I could tell like the clinical correlation between cells under the microscope and what the patient looked like clinically. And that was really, really interesting to me. So um, that's kind of what I talk about skin on a cellular level and how lasers can kind of make the cells and the function of those cells act and behave younger. Younger skin is the same thing as saying, you know, healthy skin. And so I'm not always about trying to look younger. That comes with the, the outcome. So when I was in residency and derm, um, derm residency and med school, everybody wanted to look younger, make the skin look younger, make it look younger. But that's not even my, that's not even the goal. The goal is to have healthy skin. Like if you look at Riley, my six year old little, little girl, she doesn't have any dilated pores, she doesn't have any acne, she has no sun damage, she has no, her skin is fresh and it's functioning optimally, she has a lot of hyaluronic acid, she has um, you know beautiful coloration to her skin, she doesn't have sunspots, she doesn't have lentigines, things like that because she hasn't accumulated that amount of damage and hopefully she never will because I make sure she wears sunscreen and takes care of her skin starting at an early age. But she hasn't accumulated all that damage which will age her skin, which in 20 years may look older, but it's not even older, it's just unhealthy. So rewinding the clock and um, getting rid of that sun damage and protecting the skin from future damage is what lasers do. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. And I know it because it works. Like patients coming into my clinic, everybody looks you know, 15 to 20 years younger than they are, but like nothing has been done because you're basically inducing the body's own regenerative processes to make the skin healthy. And healthy skin is beautiful, young looking skin and you don't have to cover anything up with makeup and you don't have to use any topical or oral um, prescriptive medications. You don't have to use, you know, um, any metronidazole for your rosacea or you don't have to use benzoyl peroxide or, um, you know, dapsone for your acne. You don't have to use um, um, nice statin cream for your seborrheic dermatitis. All that stuff corrects itself as your skin gets healthier. And so that, you know, in, in, you know, as a dermatologist too, you're, you're so used to prescribing medications, either oral or topical. If you hear that's uh, Kobe, my puppy, trying to get in through the door. I'm not gonna let him distract me though. Um, but basically, um, you know, in dermatology residency, you learn to treat um, dermatologic ailments, whether it's acne, rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis, psoriasis, um, you know, all these different ailments by either prescription or topical medication. But when you use good products that allow the skin to function optimally, healthy, keeps the skin cells hydrated, keep antioxidants and nutrients and vitamins and actives, keep the skin cells healthy, all those or most of those dermatologic conditions correct and you don't need to prescribe medications. I rarely, I mean, there's maybe a small percentage of my patients um, who need me to give them a prescription medication. Usually it's more for eczematous dermatitis or psoriasis, things like that. But for my acne, rosacea, sedderm, those patients who suffer from that, when they're doing lasers and they're using optimal products that make their skin cells healthy, healthy all of those dermatologic conditions self-correct and it manifests with beautiful glowing skin without the need for makeup, whether it's a V-beam or a Fraxel or a Pico or a YAG, you know, laser. Um, that's Then that's my passion and I know it works because I've done it on myself. I've been doing it on my patients for years and most of the patients who come and see me in clinic, either if it's their first time seeing me and they've been following me, they use the different, you know, skincare regimens that I recommend and they come in with this beautiful skin without the need for makeup or they've had lasers before and you're basically correcting the skin from the inside out. 
So that is just kind of like a, a short little video that I wanted to do on how lasers and products and certain procedures can make skin healthy from the inside out on a cellular level and that just manifests with beautiful skin. You don't want to cover it up. Like if you have acne and you're spot treating it or you have rosacea and you're using your topical metronidazole gel, you want to get the, to the root of the problem. You want to do a V-beam to retract those blood vessels to make all of the sequela that comes from those overactive blood vessels and flushing of the face from triggers it's self correct and it won't happen anymore. You don't have to cover anything up. If you have rosacea and you do V beam, you know, maybe once a year to keep, you know, the skin acting and behaving normally, you won't have to cover up with foundation or powder. If you have melasma and you regulate those melanocytes and you do clear and brilliant or a fraxel or even a pico or a combination therapy, sometimes even V beam for melasma, and you use like a, a skin brightener to kind of downregulate the overactive melanocytes. So you don't have these dispigmentated dispigmentation and patches of patchy pigment over the face itself corrects melasma and that's how you correct it you don't cover it up with concealer because when you get out of the shower you're still going to be all blotchy and your pigment's going to be um dysregulated so i think um it, it is a commitment and it does you know does take hard work because once you get to a certain point and you have clear skin that's flawless and you kind of stop you fall off track like now maintenance is usually once a year sometimes, sometimes it's twice a year, sometimes it's once every two years. But it's kinda like going to the gym, say you're training for a fitness competition. It's hard to get to that point where you're ready for a fitness competition, but then once you get there, the maintenance is a lot easier than what it took to get there. That's kinda how lasers are. So I recommend maybe a fraxel once a year, um, you know, to keep the skin healthy and to maintain those results. Because once you stop doing that, once you stop using your products, you stop being diligent with your sunscreen, you stop getting lasers or facials, you'll go back to genetically where you were with the amount of damage that you've accumulated in your skin your whole life. So it by default will go back to your baseline. So um, hopefully it will be better than your baseline, but it does take work to, to maintain it, but it's definitely worth it because there's nothing like just jumping out of the shower, a pool, the ocean, and just not having to worry about what your skin looks like. Just putting it on sunscreen to make sure you don't get any future damage. But you don't have to cover up any melasma or any acne or rosacea or under eye circles or anything like that. It's just a, a really, um, it's a really beautiful thing. And it's one of the things that makes me the happiest and to be able to gift that to my patients makes me happy too. And that's my passion. So. Um, I guess this video was just pretty much um, how lasers and procedures can affect the skin on a cellular level. I would like to do like a dry erase board or like some type of like, you know, a schematic where I could show all the different layers of the skin, how the baby skin cells kind of mature and desquamate off, what collagen looks like in the in the dermis, in the papillary dermis, the reticular dermis, what elastin looks like, what silver elastosis looks like, because you guys are so smart and those of you who follow me are next level in your skin education. And so I think that if you see it and you hear me talk about it, you'll be able to um, vibe with me when I say, okay, under the microscope, this is what we see, this is how it gets corrected and this is why the skin looks beautiful because it's deeper than what you just see at face value. It's deeper than what you see clinically when you're looking at healthy skin. If you look histologically at those cells, cells in the skin that looks healthy and flawless look better under the microscope too. So I hope this wasn't like way over anybody's head. I don't think it will be, but um, my next couple videos, I'll answer your questions. Um, again, I think somebody, a lot of people want a video on Accutane, a lot of people want um, a video on like brow lifts, like non-surgical brow lifts and like fox eye uh, throw lifts. That's really big right now. Um, I think a lot of people wanted a um, a video on layering of products. And, and you guys have so many insightful questions. I'll try to like pump out one video a week and I'm going to keep going. So the sun is set. My friends are almost here and the babies are uh, not home right now. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get dressed really quick for on a dress. And at least I got one YouTube video out of the way. Okay, I love you guys.